Hello guys, welcome to lecture 6, a very nice and exciting lecture today. Uh, we're going to be talking about ways to do a business in a foreign EU country. To begin with, um, starting a business in another country can be financially and emotionally rewarding. Okay, can be, but you should have realistic expectations for success and avoid any compensate for the potential obstacles that inevitably accompany a new venture. Okay, all business, even though they will be abroad or in your home country, are risky. For instance, let's take the United States, perhaps one of the most friendly clients in the world for entrepreneurship. Almost one half of new business operations fail by the end of the fourth year and one in four fail by the end of the first year, even though it's one of the most friendly uh, clients in the world. While there are basically no statistics indicating the failure rate, uh, not only for uh, ongoing businesses, but for, uh, for new enterprises by country, okay, you should assume that the difficulty of achieving success is as least as hard in a foreign land as in the United States or in Europe. However, there are a number of tips and techniques you can follow to help you better the odds of your possible success. I will analyze some of them. To begin with, identify and quantify expectations. What I mean by that? Begin your effort by looking for parallels to the type of markets you are already serving. Okay. Ideally, select countries or regions where you, can, you could provide your products or services without making too many modifications to fit local standards or laws. Okay, a, a tentative plan to move forward should be the outcome of your planning and due to diligence with answers of some questions. Um, for instance, while you are t undertaking this operation, one, you should ask yourself, are you escaping from an competitive market in your, in your country and your th hopes are the new business potential in the, in the new market you are about to enter will be less competitive? Are you expanding your business due to interest from the overseas market? Are you pushing your products or services to the new market or is it a new market pulling your products by demand? Obviously, the latter is better than the former, but neither is guarantee for success. You should know that. Uh, what are you going to do in the new country? Will you sell your products made elsewhere within the country? Assemble or manufacture products for shipment outside the new country? Or manufacture and sell products within the new country or in combination of all the three? Be sure that the new locale has the resources to execute your business model what, whatever it may be, okay, uh, where, will, where, where will your business be physically located, okay, uh, your location it, it will be in a major city with ample infrastructure or outside where you may be called upon to provide more basics, um, are your customers local, uh, regional, countrywide or beyond country borders, how will supply and movement of materials be affected? Do you have need of a train or technology that will work for so all these questions? Who needs to be involved in the planning and execution of the new venture? Do you need the input of local people in the country? Will you anticipate locating the business? Um, what services will they provide? Who will they report to on your current staff? Um, do you have the existing resources to initiate an expansion into a new market? If not, what are you missing and where will you get them? A vital question that you should ask yourself. When do you want the new business to be established? Because timing is king. You have internal or external deadlines that must be met. Correct? Correct. How flexible are the deadlines? What constitutes establishing the business? A physical presence with employees? Uh, first sales, first the employees. So the circumstances in a foreign country are generally outside of one's control. Can you compensate for delays at a reasonable cost? All these questions 
should come uh, into consideration and serious uh, demonstration in practice. How are you going to proceed to meet your objectives? What are your major deliverables and timelines leading to your final objectives? Okay, a very important question. Are they completely defined so they can be communicated clearly to those who must execute your plans? Um, have you considered every element or as much as positive that will affect your plans and develop alternative strategies? If your plans go okay, planning and execution go hand in hand. Okay, while you will be inevitably overlook some elements, your success is directly depend upon the level of preparation you do before taking the first step. Um, just be consistent. No one will guarantee you that the more preparation you do, okay, the more success you will have, okay, uh, that these both actions do not link together but obviously okay obviously the more preparation you will do the most ready you will be and the most awareness you will have okay depending on obstacles depending on new threats depending uh, the 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 culture of the new market and your new uh, customers will accept your effort even the even your business will be service based or product based okay it is generally makes sense to start your operations on a small scale with the intention of expanding later on okay for example uh, you might be pick only one or two products to offer your foreign customers initially or outsource manufacture with the ability to move it in-house as you gain knowledge, slowly, slowly. Maintaining optimal flexibility during the first days makes sense, allowing you to test the waters of the market before dedicating too many resources. So it's better actually to start, okay, with less products, okay, uh, to evaluate okay how the market reacts okay uh, how easy is to move on and avoid any threats and slowly slowly when you meet your the satisfaction i would say of your needs you add slowly slowly more products and you progress uh, thank god the time is there okay so, in my personal opinions, if you search on the internet, you will find different and various uh, uh, notifications about how much time you need to bring your uh, company at its peak. Listen, the entry life cycle okay, of a company in a foreign country, uh, in a non-European country in general, it's, it's nothing that anyone can identify from A to B. Uh, sometimes it's a matter of luck, sometimes it's a matter of timing, Some, sometimes it's a matter of research, of course, as I was saying before. Um, sometimes it's the quality of your product or, or the service and how you will meet your customer's expectations, okay? And how you will meet your customer needs, more importantly. So, uh, taking it step by step, I think you will have the foundation and the concrete foundation stable and uh, in the as the time passes uh, the same market will show you i am ready okay uh, go on turn on the speed okay um, very important is to understand the environment okay uh, while some experts i don't know if you ever heard darren kaiser he claimed that starting a business overseas might actually be much easier less risky and more economically sound than get setting a business in your home country 
it is far better to expect problems than assume everything will go as planned. Um, in a way, I disagree with Darren. Okay, uh, I'm not going to go into much detail, but uh, when you will see uh, all what I've uploaded to the lecture C, lecture, lecture six, I will also be uploading uh, uh, a YouTube video about guidelines, pros and cons, setting up a, a business overseas, and uh, this state of Darren Kaiser will be analyzed in detail. So I do recommend uh, you should uh, have a look at that video. Um, there are four major areas to consider when setting up a, a shop in a new country. Okay. First of all, is the regular dollar climate. Every country has its own version of immigration rules, financial regulation, taxation, employment law. If your business requires import or export of goods, you will need to check out any restrictions on the products being moved and the cost associated with the movement. Property rights generally vary by country, so don't assume that your investment is safe based upon US or Europe standards. Uh, confiscation of property is not uncommon, particularly in emerging industrialized countries. Area two is the political stability. Uh, political stability is becoming more common throughout the world, especially in countries with high unemployment uh, and democratic regimes. While there is potentially great reward in the most circular environments, there is also great risk. If you plan to begin your new business in a country that is rapidly involving politically or economically, uh, you should limit your financial exposure and personal risk until you are confident that you understand the environment and can appropriately cope with the potential changes. Clear enough, the economic potential as an area three you should take into consideration because as a result, the worldwide recession, some countries are experiencing draconian tax burden and negative growth, most likely leading to social unrest and possible attacks. Okay. Uh, obviously on the foreign-owned businesses. At the same time, other countries have rolled down the red carpet to new businesses as the key to a brighter economic future. Tax incentives have increased while regulatory and bureaucracy has been steadily eliminated. Okay, so locating in one of the later countries can benefit the populace as well as the new owners. Uh, and this is uh, pretty clear, okay, uh, because the economic potential in a, as, as a whole will affect and will react likely to, to begin uh, with the market shares uh, in order to establish a, a business. So the cultural differences, are, in my opinion, is one of the, of the most uh, important areas that you should take into consideration. Because in addition to a possible language barrier, there are a whole host of cultural behaviors, attitudes, and sensitivities that can affect your business. <clears throat> so consider employing a cross-cultural business consultant until you and your people are confident that you understand the, the nuances of communication. Remember that something as simple as a handshake as simple as a handshake may have significance that you don't understand. Not bringing a gift or bringing the wrong gift might be a disaster. And setting a woman to contact negotiations could spell doom. In some countries, religious customs may affect how and when businesses is contacted, especially if you are about to expose and uh, open up a business in the Middle East. So, uh, another important thing is, is to determine your budget. While businesses fail for a variety of reasons, one of the more common causes is insufficient startup capital. 
general study from the business owners, optimistic projections of revenues and profits. Starting a new business is difficult under the best circumstances, but even more so when also operations are remote and the business environment is uncertain. So when making your projections, be conservative or estimating revenues and liberal when estimating expenses because the anticipation that your cash flow will break even the point when the money comes in meets or exceeds the money going out will be longer than we initially expected. In, in, in most of the cases, uh, resolve the logistics issues as a, as a four point that I'm going to give you today before setting up a shop. Many countries um, lack the infrastructure that exists in the industrialized countries. Even where movement of goods is not physically restricted, there may be regulations that affect the free flow of products within and outside the country. So as well as fees, duties and export taxes, you should take the consideration the infrastructure that exists in the country. Because in some countries, okay, the payment of bribes to local government officials is normal business practice. Okay, uh, defined as small bonuses, in, for instance, that can be paid out to facilitate service. Uh, if you will be setting up business in a country where gifts and brides are the normal way of doing business, you must retain legal advice about what you can and cannot do before starting operations. So apart from uh, setting up the business and uh, involved a cross-cultural uh, consultant, you should take as well as advice before starting legal advice before starting the operations. Uh, finding a local a local agent will be a good idea because sometimes the, the accountant is experienced internationally laws can be invaluable when establishing a physical presence in a new country. You don't want to have your products seized or your operation shut down due to some miscommunications or misunderstandings with the local government officials. Uh, establishing, of course, obviously, an international banking relationship, it's, it's, it's vital. Uh, research your international money transfer options to begin with. Unless you are in need of some specialized service, you should not normally rely on your bank to send and receive money across borders. You should not, never. In many cases, you are charged extraordinary fees and have to wait several days for the money to clear and become available in your account. So be aware of that. And to conclude, before venturing to a foreign country business market, always develop an exit strategy. And be aware of indicators that might trigger your retreat. If things go wrong, you will want to salvage as much of your investment as possible. Identify the restrictions of selling your valuable business to a, a local agent or somebody who needs to take it on board and continue it on. Thank you very much guys for working. We'll be, we are going to be closing the lecture today. Uh, everything is on the Moodle. Please follow the links that I've uploaded. Enjoy the lecture, enjoy the video and if you have any questions please send me an email. I'm available 24-7. Please allow me 24 hours to get back to you with any questions you might have regarding the lecture you've seen today. Thank you so much.